Hello, everybody. This is Troy. I'm a senior account manager with Arbitrade. We'll be starting the webinar at this time. Uh, just give me a quick OK in the chat box if you're hearing me clearly and seeing my screen all right. OK, looks like everybody's good to go. I've got enough replies. Looks like we're up and running fine. Uh, so thank you for joining. We're going to take a look at some of the crypto movements. It's been interesting, actually, uh, through the start of this week with all the fear on the markets uh, with this coronavirus. And, uh, you know, gold went flying up on uh, on the, the start of the market Sunday night slash Monday morning and, and through the day yesterday with a little bit of correction since then. Uh, but uh, we're, we'll take a look at how the cryptos have uh, reacted similarly to safe havens, being that they're decentralized, don't have a single country to call home, similar to gold uh, and other safe haven uh, metals. And so we'll, we'll take a look at that relationship. We'll take a look at what the news is and how the movements on the chart uh, occurred and what you might be able to expect moving forward with uh, the movements on some of these crypto uh, pairings and, and even the crypto index. Now, as we go forward, keep in mind, all investments have risk. I think we understand that. No one trade is guaranteed to profit. Uh, but obviously, we're all here because each trade does have nice potential profits. And so if you if you utilize proper strategy, proper entry points, uh, obviously, nobody's going to win every trade. But you you should be able eventually with a proper strategy to win enough that, that that you're winning more than you're losing. And that's really the plan. About a third of all traders, maybe a little less than that with Avatrade, are able to profit long term, beat the spread, beat the swaps and 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 control their emotions enough uh, to, to trade with a strategy that works ongoing month after month after month. Uh, and and so you might think, well, you mean 71%, as it says on this slide, lose lose most or all of their funds they're trading with? Listen, mo most traders get into trading and they really don't know what they're doing. Uh, and if you, if you keep flipping a coin without really having a real strategy, eventually you lose to the, the small spreads and swaps. Uh, about a third of traders, as you see there, take it seriously. They, they're maybe attending webinars, they're learning new strategies, they're learning ideas, they're actually applying market information and able to profit long term. And there's no reason uh, why that percentage can't grow uh, and, and why uh, any of you that are listening today can't become part of that growing percentage with Arbitrade. And Arbitrade's a hedging broker. Uh, we don't need clients uh, to lose, to profit. It's not the business model. Uh, we hedge with outside liquidity providers if need be to go with our clients. Uh, again, the, the, the idea is to profit on the spread and the swaps. If Arbitrate can go with liquidity providers with larger moves, uh, institutional size trades with tighter spreads, then uh, if, if we win with our clients, great. We, we still profit on the spread. So uh, this is the business model. And so we're, we're here to try and help you from an educational perspective, these webinars are not meant to be financial advisement, but from an educational perspective, we're here to help you learn, grow your knowledge base, add some tools to your tool belt, so to speak, and, and hopefully come out on top more than, than you don't so that you can profit long term with that uh, third or so of traders that are already doing that with us. Uh, you can read the full risk disclosure statement on avatrade.com. Uh, feel free to check it out. Uh, those of you that aren't using our mobile app, by the way, before we get into the cryptocurrencies, as long as we're talking about risk here, uh, the AvaGo mobile app uh, is has some special features on it. One is called Ava Protect. So if you log into your trading account using the AvaGo mobile app, you'll see that you can actually add protection to your trades for a small flat cost. No matter how much it might lose, if it goes the wrong way, you only pay that flat cost and any any negative during that covered period gets added back to your account. There's even a video on our landing page that you could watch uh, explaining how it works, but it's all the FX, gold, silver, and maybe more assets soon uh, that have that uh, protection feature that, that helps risk manage maybe in a way that could be useful for you. Uh, okay, so as we go forward, 
we could go over what is blockchain technology. We could talk about that it's decentralized and all of the things about uh, the cryptocurrency technology that makes it what it is. I don't think we need to go through the whole slideshow. I'll, I'll touch on some important points. Uh, one being that cryptocurrencies are decentralized. I alluded to that as we started the webinar. Uh, what does that mean, decentralized? It means there's no one country that cryptocurrencies call home. And so they're not affected by as much fundamental news in terms of individual countries, job numbers, production numbers, uh, you know, all of these different economic reports that are scheduled each day and each week that come out that make currencies go up and down. Uh, cryptocurrencies are less affected by those. And so technical analysis tends to work very, very well with cryptocurrencies. And the only type of fundamental news really you need to keep an eye on for the most part is breaking news about cryptocurrencies, right? And also fear factor on the market. And when I say fear factor, I mean uh, when people run to gold because they're scared of economic problems. Right now it's the coronavirus affecting travel, tourism. Uh, and so when there's fear, people tend to buy safe havens like gold. What we've noticed over time is because cryptocurrencies are decentralized like gold, many times cryptocurrencies have been strengthening as gold has been strengthening and vice versa. As it's weakening, they've pulled, been, been somewhat more likely to pull back down. Not every time, obviously, but uh, this is something to keep in mind, this decentralized factor of cryptocurrencies not being affected so much by any one country, but moving with the greater economic picture, like something like gold and oil and those sorts of assets do that are decentralized also. Uh, the blockchain technology, we could get into that. Just understand that it's very secure technology. Some say hack proof. OK, uh, some some companies that supply cryptocurrency exchange have been hacked, but the actual blockchain itself of the cryptocurrency to this date has not been hacked. And so uh, very secure technology has a digital ledger that has transaction history, all of these things. It's been copied to this technology has been used now in voting systems. It's being used uh, by private companies to issue stock and it's become more mainstream at retailers. And so now people are back into trading cryptocurrencies and we see Bitcoin breaking 10,000 on occasion, trying to go back up other cryptocurrencies really trending. And so they're nice to trade on now because of the, the mainstreaming of cryptocurrencies over the past year or two, people are back into it again. It's almost like the heyday a, a couple years back when, when what Bitcoin hit 20,000 or, or whatever high it hit. OK, so let's take a look at some of the recent news and then let's get on the charts and see what we can find. As I go, please feel free uh, to ask questions. Gent or Gert, are you able to hear yet? Let me let me send him a message. Audio is good on my side. OK, so he needs to figure out how to unmute. All right. So I. Uh, what do you think this means? Crypto market sentiment drops. Bitcoin and ETH in positive zone. Uh, if sentiment is dropping on the crypto market, what does that tend to do to the direction of movement? This article came out yesterday, by the way, which in, in trading terms, maybe is old news, right? Yesterday can be a long time ago. Any any ideas? What if you see an article headline saying crypto market sentiment drops? What might happen next with the movements? Fundamentally speaking, what direction are you thinking? Up or down? If if sentiment is dropping in the crypto market, and we can take a look at some of the numbers. So, uh, bitcoins. Uh, what was the move in sentiment? Down 9.3%. Ethereum down 0.6%. Ripple down 7.7%. Bitcoin Cash, etc. Okay, we get the idea. The headline was right. Crypto market sentiment dropped coming into yesterday. All right. So typically that means maybe bearish momentum on those assets. I'm not 
getting much in the way of interaction towards me. Type OK if you're still hearing me. I just want to make sure. It's OK to be quiet. I just want to make sure you're hearing me. OK, good. Thank you. All right, so uh, let's look at a couple other things. What's happening on uh, Wall Street? Wall Street seen higher. Apple tops earnings deluge. These are the futures. The market hasn't opened in New York, but we trade on the futures on the indices on our platform, which is nice. You can trade 24 hours a day, pretty much Monday through Friday. Uh, they're green. They're green. Yesterday was red because of the coronavirus scare, right? Coming out of the weekend, as the numbers were coming in, that more and more people were dying around the world with this coronavirus, the markets plunged yesterday. They gapped down and they kept dropping. And so you see what happened yesterday, nearly 2%, 1.5% to 2% drop on the major indices in the U.S. Today, the futures are green. And what's this here? Does anyone know what the VIX index is? What does that measure? The fact that it's turning red, it's dropping uh, as the futures are turning green. The VIX index is, another name for it is the volatility index or fear index. If fear is dropping, volatility is dropping, that might mean people are calming down from what happened yesterday. Maybe a correction is in order because yesterday this, the fear index was up yesterday and the futures were red. It was a sign. High fear, indices tend to drop, people run into gold and gold goes up. That's exactly what happened yesterday. Now it's the opposite setup today. We've got the futures are green instead of red. And the fear index is down, meaning less fear. So what do you think might happen with gold today or cryptocurrencies if they're viewed as a safe haven and fear is dropping? What direction might the cryptocurrencies go today if they're acting as a safe haven and fear is dropping? Robert, you say bullish. Any other opinions? What happens to gold if fear drops? Felix, I'm with you. You say bearish, which means dropping maybe. No guarantee, right? But gold tends to drop when fear is dropping. Fear index is down. So we expect safe havens like gold maybe to drop, especially after all the rising it, it did yesterday. So uh, then if cryptocurrencies are also viewed as decentralized like gold, and less affected by economic worries. If they're acting like gold and they went up yesterday and gold went up and gold's expected to drop, then maybe we had bearish sentiment here. Market sentiment dropped on cryptos yesterday. And today we've got fear dropping. Maybe we have more than one reason to think cryptocurrencies could drop. OK, there's no guarantee, but we're looking for fundamental news to get an idea of what direction do we prefer? OK, now the question is, OK, if we think cryptocurrencies act as safe haven somewhat, we see that the futures are green, meaning positive momentum. Fear is down a significant percentage based on the volatility index. And we think, OK, cryptos could pull back. The question is, well, what kind of entry point would we have technical analysis wise? Is it in a good spot to bank on a, a pull down? Well, what happened recently? Bitcoin jumped to 9,000. Okay, over the virus fears, right? Fears on the virus, Bitcoin went up like gold. It's right there in the headline. Okay, so it might be an opportunistic spot if you think, and I say if, I'm not telling you to think this. If you think that Bitcoin should drop as fear dissipates on the markets, as gold maybe drops, then you might take advantage of the fact that Bitcoin went up yesterday with the fear. OK, so let's take a look at the charts. Let's see what's happening. Uh, we already see now I'm showing you Australian JPY for a reason. OK, the yen is a safe haven currency. Just like gold and the cryptocurrencies, the yen is viewed as a safe haven currency, okay? And so what's happening with the yen today? These are 15-minute candles. It's weakening. Look, the Australian's climbing against the yen, okay? So 
safe havens are weakening today. The yen is weakening. We can see it right here. Okay. Uh, if we look at gold, predictable, isn't it? Dropping. Why is gold breaking support levels? Here was the support level. Support, 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 broken support. That was so predictable today. How? Why was it predictable? Let me show you again. Fear index down seven over seven and a half percent. If fear is down, safe havens tend to drop. Okay, so uh, with a quick snapshot, you could look at this in the morning before you go to work. See, are the futures green? Is the fear up or down? And you can have an idea of what direction you might prefer to trade that day within one minute of looking at this page. You can see the prior days was red. Today, the futures are green. And right now, fear is dropping. Okay, so without even looking at the gold chart, I already knew it had to be dropping. Okay, in my mind anyways. There's, when we started, remember, you're never 100%, right? You always have to give yourself a chance of being wrong. Uh, so there's the support level. And we looked at this yesterday in the webinar, by the way, and we talked about uh, maybe taking advantage of a pullback and also taking advantage of these bounces that were occurring. This was support, trade up off the support, winner. Trade up off the support, winner. Trade up off the support, loser. But then you have a pending order. If it breaks the support to sell with a sell stop, winner. So in that plan, I'm not looking to be right every time. I'm just playing the technicals, okay? And, and yesterday, going with the fear up off the support until it broke, okay? So now let's look at the cryptocurrencies. Bitcoin. Wow, doesn't that look like gold? It shot up yesterday. And going into today, look at the rise, okay? It flattened out. And look at the high point. The high point is gradually getting lower. You see? Downtrending. You see? It didn't break the support yet, right? I say yet. It doesn't mean it has to. But if this is going to mimic gold, it looks like it's behind. It looks like gold was a leading indicator if it's going to follow gold today what does that mean a leading indicator what's a leading indicator mean it means one precedes the other right and if you believe and and look you don't have to just say okay i believe you look at the movements and 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 decide yourself whether you believe it gold went up yesterday and Cryptocurrencies went up. Gold flattened out just like this with lowering high points. Let's go back to gold. I want to show you. Let me put them side by side. Didn't gold also? Let's go to maybe 30 minute candles and 30 minute candles. Okay. This, this looked better on one hour just because I have split screen. This also had descending high points, right? After a large rise. You see that? Large rise, descending high points, and then a broken support. Large rise, descending high points. It did not break the support yet, right? Uh, but it has the potential to do that. No guarantee, but the potential. If you see a pattern, if you believe cryptocurrencies went up with gold, flattened out with gold, and gold has led the way to drop. If you believe this is going to follow, then you can take your shot, okay? What other reason, other than matching it against gold, what other reason might we think, why might we think this could drop? Remember what we looked at here. Crypto market sentiment drops. We saw the article, okay? So it's something to keep in mind. Uh, how can you protect yourself in case you're wrong here? Let's say you took a, a market sell now. You could, you don't have to. Let's say you took a market sell now. Where might you put your stop loss to protect yourself? Let's go to just Bitcoin. Let me get rid of some of these lines. 
where might you put your stop loss to protect yourself if, if you if you trade with stop losses? They can be very helpful for managing risk. If I was going to put a stop loss, if I was trading down now, let's say I took a market move and I sold, okay? Which I'm not saying you should. You might wait until it hits the resistance level, which is here. You could plan a sell limit, that it, a pending order, sell limit, that if it comes up, you sell. If you want to do that, that's very easy. Change from market execution to pending order. The type of pending order that sells from a higher point, does anyone know? What would I program if I wanted to sell if it got to this resistance point? If it came back up here and then I wanted it to sell, what kind of pending order do I program to sell from a higher point than it is now? The four of them are showing here. Yeah, it's a sell limit. Very good, Gert. So sell limit would be that one. And I would program the price at which I would want to sell from up near the resistance. That's one plan. If you think it's just going to keep dropping now, then you could just do a market sell, obviously. In either case, where might it make sense to put a stop loss? If, if you trade with stop loss, not everyone does, but it, many times it, it, it might be advisable to do so. Just above where? Technical analysis speaking, technically speaking, Many times it makes sense to put a stop loss above the resistance. If it breaks through the resistance, then you might think, okay, I was wrong. It's going to climb now, maybe. Okay. So, yeah, above the previous high, you might say, right up here, somewhere up here. If it breaks the resistance, boy, something's different than we thought. It just went to another high. And here we thought it had bearish momentum. So, if it breaks the resistance, and don't put your stop loss too close. Sometimes it'll break through by a little bit, then drop, right? A little false signal. So you want to have your stop loss far enough up that you don't get caught by a false signal. But somewhere up here above the resistance would make sense, and your sell limit could kick in right about there, okay, from somewhere near the resistance level. So that's one strategy. If, if you believe, and again, I'm not telling you you should believe it'll drop, if you believe it'll drop based on the fundamental news we looked at, then a sell limit would make sense from the resistance or a market sell, whichever you prefer. Obviously, if you take a market sell from here, rather than waiting to see if it'll come up to the resistance, you're risking a little bit more to your stop loss up here. Or you could just take a little smaller trade and risk the same amount with a stop loss further away, which is okay. Okay. Another strategy might be to wait for confirmation of a downtrend. What kind of pending order would make sense if I say, okay, I don't know which way it'll go now. I think it might drop, but I don't know. If that's what I think, then I'm not going to trade yet. If I'm waiting for confirmation of a downtrend, and sometimes this can be a smart way to trade, wait for confirmation of the downtrend before you sell. So, or wait for confirmation of a breakthrough up here before you buy. So. If I was waiting for this support level to break, then sell from down here. What kind of pending order would sell from a lower point? Robert, you typed it before I asked. Good. Sell stop. Sell stop. So if you're more patient and you don't care that you're not going to get the perfect entry point from the high point, you're waiting for a breakthrough of the support to confirm a downtrend, you would program a sell stop pending order to kick in somewhere down here. And honestly, I've seen higher win percentages by waiting for confirmation of the movement and taking maybe a lower entry point on your sell rather than trying to catch the highest entry point with a reversal. Because many times when you wait for it to go up before you trade down, you're actually trading down in an uptrend against the momentum. And sometimes it'll just break through the resistance. But that's up to each trader to decide which they prefer. Uh, sell limit would sell from the resistance. Sell stop would sell from the below the broken support might make sense. And then your stop loss would be back above the resistance. And there's no reason why you couldn't also put, what would you put up here if it breaks the resistance? It'll buy. If it has enough momentum to break the resistance, that's a buy stop. Okay. So many times when it's ranging like this, ranging up, down, up, down. 
You, and if you're unsure of the direction, you can do a double setup. You put a, a pending sell stop down here. You put a pending buy stop up here. If it breaks the resistance by enough, the distance that you deem significant, then it buys. If it breaks the support by enough, a distance that you deem significant, maybe beyond these wicks, then it, then your sell stop will sell. In this case, you're not trying to be right. You're just being smart. You're waiting for confirmation of either a breakthrough on the upside or a breakthrough on the downside. And even though right now, maybe you think it'll drop more than go up because of the fundamental news, you can still prepare for both. Okay, so if you're right, if the fundamental news causes it to break the support, great, you're in. If it doesn't ever break the support, then you never got in on your sell. So it's okay if, if the fundamental news was wrong in that case, because eventually it's going to break either the support or the resistance and kick in either your buy stop or your sell stop. It's going to happen eventually. It has to. It won't stay in this range forever. Okay. Any questions to this point? You see how nice this is ranging. You could be trading within the range. Yes, good question. This was the breakthrough candle. First of all, let me explain. Let's watch this. This is the amazing thing with, with cryptocurrencies. This is the amazing thing. Let me, it's like a staircase to heaven, right? Let me show you. You could ignore the fundamentals with cryptos a lot of times. A breakthrough candle is when a resistance level or a support level gets broken. And typically, a breakthrough candle is larger than the prior candles, and it creates a continuation movement. You could have had a simple buy stop, sell stop strategy like we're talking about here. And look how many times you'd have won. Resistance, resistance, breakthrough candle, winner on the buy stop. Resistance, resistance, resistance. Here, resistance, resistance, breakthrough candle, winner on the buy stop. Okay, resistance, resistance, breakthrough candle. If you had your buy stop above this resistance, another winner. Resistance, breakthrough candle. If you had your buy stop above the resistance, another winner. Resistance, breakthrough candle. If you had your buy stop above this resistance here, another winner. And now it didn't break yet. Now it's ranging. Resistance, resistance, support, support, resistance. It's waiting to go one way or the other. So when you can look at the history and say, wow, I would have won maybe five out of those six times. Maybe one of them had a false wick that came back down would have hit your stop loss if you had it too close. Okay, let's be realistic. But if you could have won, I don't know, 80% of these breakthroughs just by sitting in front of this through the day yesterday, wow. And and even some of this happened today. Okay, the latest breakthrough. So it's really amazing to look at, to understand two things. That number one, the movement was driven by fundamental news, somewhat. Cryptocurrencies were raging up as fear hit the markets. So it was somewhat predictable as gold was going up, the cryptocurrencies very well could. And then you look at it and you say, even without knowing that, even if I didn't look at any fundamental news, my technical buy stop, sell stop strategy on breakthroughs would have won almost every time. One, two, three, four times, maybe even more. I skipped some of the, the smaller resistance levels. Depends how close you're scalping, if you're taking small movements or larger. Any questions, comments on that? Okay, so the important thing to understand, if the market's making a big swing, gold comes plunging down, you can expect probably some big movements in crypto too. There's no guarantee they'll follow gold, but they very well could. And the history just showed us that yesterday it did. And so far today it has. 
okay? So you could prepare for the hope that this breakthrough up, breakthrough up, breakthrough up, breakthrough up could occur on the way down. Breakthrough down, bounce at the support. Breakthrough down, bounce at the support. The old support from over here. It could be a staircase right back down, okay? I say could be, right? But you don't have to risk much to take your shot at those strategic entry points as it breaks through old support levels potentially. All right. And at the same time, there's no reason why you can't prepare in case it goes up. Because every once in a while, you think you got it all figured out. You say, oh, it's got to drop. Gold's dropping. Everyone's leaving the safe havens. Maybe this will come back down and it goes the complete opposite way. That's why you risk manage with maybe stop losses, hedge trades, something in case you're wrong. Because in the end, it's not about being right to make profits, it's about being smart. About knowing that, okay, if I'm wrong, I'm covered, and I can still win in the opposite direction as well. This is where long-term traders have success. They realize they don't need to guess the market. They need to have a strategy that works, like chess. One step, if it's wrong, you already have thought through what your next step and your third step and your fourth step will be until you pull the money out of the market, okay? So uh, we can look at Ethereum, the same, okay? We can look at Ripple, had a recent breakthrough, didn't it? That one looks different. Let's take a look, one hour, four hour, okay? Ripple's headed towards a resistance level. Resistance, 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 okay? Now, you might say, okay, maybe I trade down on Ripple. It's at a high point. Why might you hesitate to trade down on Ripple right now? Yes, it's at a high point, but why might I hesitate? Because it's doing what right now? Yeah, it's uptrending, right? It, it, it's uptrending. Why, why trade down in an uptrend? You can if you want, but that doesn't look like something that looks like it wants to drop through the day today, right? It doesn't to me. But what you do, if if you still think it should drop, you can go to the resistance level and say, okay, once it starts to downtrend and show me a downtrend on, say, the five-minute candles, if you see this start to form a high point and a resistance level, and then it starts to downtrend on the smaller candles, then maybe you're ready to sell because it's showing you confirmation of a downtrend. Right now, it's showing you confirmation of an, a breakthrough on the resistance and an uptrend. How much money would you have made potentially if you had your buy stop prepared like I was suggesting on Bitcoin? Isn't that exactly what I was just talking about? If, if you had set up Below this support, your sell stop, okay? If I had, let's go to 15-minute candles. I'll see it better. If I had my sell stop down here, this is a prime example of why you don't have to guess the market. Trade smart. Don't try to trade right. I could have had my sell stop here, just like we talked about on Bitcoin, and my buy stop here, just above the resistance. We'd already be in the money, right? We just as easily could have looked at Ripple before Bitcoin and we'd have watched this happen while maybe while we were talking. OK, so uh, there's a good example of what could happen. Let's go back to Bitcoin here. OK, so many times cryptocurrencies follow each other, not always, but they tend to move in a group. OK, so prepare your buy stop up here just in case Bitcoin breaks through now. And prepare yourself stop in case it goes the direction that the fundamental news says that maybe it should. Huge opportunity for profit. And we just saw it right there on Ripple. A simple breakthrough strategy on this resistance and you're in the money immediately. Okay. The Crypto 10, which is a combination of the top 10 traded cryptos by volume, it has not broken through. So it looks like Ripple is an exception to the others. The, 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 the top 10 have not bro broken this resistance as a whole. It's still holding resistance, 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 resistance. 
So you still could take your shot at a market sell on the crypto 10, prepare for a buy on the crypto 10 or Bitcoin, diversify a bit if you'd like. It makes sense. Okay, any questions? I think this is a good place to stop. You see, it was, a, it was good that we saw a Ripple's movement compared to Bitcoin. You see, they don't all move the same. But in the bigger picture, the crypto 10 tends to move the direction that the that the more popular coins will move, like Bitcoin. And I see the crypto 10 dropping off the resistance right now. So very likely Bitcoin is pulling down as well, at least temporarily. Any questions, comments? Wow, look at that drop right off the resistance. Market sell off the resistance would be doing good right now for very little risk to the other side of the uh, resistance. And let's see if Bitcoin is following yet. Yeah, it is. There goes Bitcoin starting to drop. It makes sense. Why? Because look at gold. Look what gold already did. Down, 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 down. Here it comes. It's trying to follow gold. No guarantee it will. But boy, it sure has over the last 24 to 48 hours. Okay, if there aren't any questions, this is a good spot to end. Thank you all for attending. Uh, take your shots at the cryptos. They're moving nicely today. They look very predictable. The technicals set up well. Uh, I think you can find some nice profits there with, without having to risk much. Uh, Felix, if... All of these are recorded, so if, if you need to digest things, uh, by tomorrow, it'll be uploaded to our YouTube channel. Go to YouTube and just search Avatrade channel. You'll find it. There's a section for English webinars, and all of these webinars are on that YouTube channel. Uh, so you can rewatch them, rewind, uh, whatever you need to do, okay? And you can watch some of the past ones from this week, last week also, okay? All right, great. Thank you, everybody. Bye for now. Good luck with you trading and uh, wishing you lots of profits here today.